there's always something strange, dangerous, or a bit outrageous happening with outlaw bikers in Australia and New Zealand. Although they imported 1% biker culture wholesale from America, between the hyper-aggressive stance of their cops, On your knees. the crowded, shifting motorcycle club environment, and the flamboyance of some of its members, the biker scene down under sometimes seems a world apart from their brother bikers, or bikies as they call them. The mob reporter here with news of fresh boisterous biker antics down under, involving some of the world's biggest biker brands, including 33 members of the Hells Angels getting pinched after a public brawl with tourists, and police raids hitting the Mongols and the Banditos, as well as some colorfully named homegrown clubs. Let me tell you about it. Police! FBI, get the ground! The Banditos Motorcycle Club, a storied veteran American outfit, was hit with raids and arrests in Australia over several days, from June 21st to June 24th, 2021. It's part of an ongoing campaign against outlaw bikers. The Raptor Squad is a specialized police unit targeting serious organized crime, especially bikers, in an aggressive policing policy that officers call legal harassment. Over the course of four days, they arrested 10 people, five of them members of the Banditos in New South Wales, a large region that includes Australia's largest city, Sydney. Some of them were hauled in still wearing their Banditos colors. Officers executed eight search warrants and seven firearm prohibition orders, which are court-authorized searches for guns and gun law compliance, at homes in several suburbs. In the first search, a 31-year-old man was arrested who police describe as a senior member of the Banditos. A search of two properties linked to him uncovered five guns, four bolt-action rifles, and a shotgun. Also seized was ammo, a butterfly knife, and cannabis. What looks to be his home gym was decked out with a Banditos banner. Four more guns were seized the next day at another home where two men, aged 41 and 63, had their gun licenses suspended. Over the next couple of days, more arrests and more seizures were made. Police say cocaine, steroids, prescription medication, cell phones, and non-firearm weapons were seized. The head of the Raptor Squad said the operation was a proactive strategy to suppress public acts of violence and to target an organized crime group. June in Australia started with banditos and ended with Finks being busted. That's Finks with a capital F, as in the Finks Motorcycle Club, which to those like me who are familiar with Fink being an old slang word for a snitch or an informant, find it a curious name for an outlaw biker club. Although I know the name comes from an old anti-authoritarian cartoon about calling the king a fink. The finks don't seem to care much what I think, and good for them, but three senior members were nonetheless arrested June 3rd for an alleged extortion of a Sydney pawnbroker. Police say a 25-year-old man pawned a motorcycle, jewelry, and a boat for an $11,500 loan with a shopkeeper earlier in the year. In April, three different men came in, threatening the shopkeeper and demanding the goods be turned over to them. Allegedly, the guy who pawned the stuff had recently been kicked out of the Finks, and the bikers believed he still owed the club money. Police believe the Finks enforce an exit fee to leave the club. The Finks seemed to think that debt could be satisfied by the shopkeeper who took in the stuff. Three senior Finks were arrested, a 25-year-old, a 26-year-old, and a 29-year-old. They are allegedly the president, vice president, and sergeant at arms of a Fink's chapter, three of the key positions in the club's hierarchy. The alleged president is a confident male model, fitness buff, and would-be actor, 25-year-old Eamon Mulgrew, who advertises for underwear and bathing suit modeling gigs alongside running of any club. During the police investigation, the Raptor squad executed seven search warrants, seizing knuckle dusters, 19 explosives, two guns, a motorcycle engine, electronic devices, biker club clothing, including Fink's colors, and a small amount of cannabis and steroids. The trio faces charges including demanding property with menace and participating in a criminal group. One also faces gun charges. A fourth man, a non-member, was also arrested, charged with handling explosives. 
and this week, police also arrested their alleged gun supplier. A 34-year-old man described as a Fink's associate was charged with supplying shortened firearms, supplying prohibited firearms, and possessing shortened firearms. In New Zealand, three serious outlaw motorcycle clubs were hit by significant arrests. New Zealand is also an island nation, and although it is 1,200 miles east of Australia, because of the remoteness of the area, the two nations remain close and share much, culturally, economically, and criminally. A quirk about New Zealand is that the very first chapter of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club outside of California was started in New Zealand back in 1961. It is perhaps with a bit of that original old school vibe of antisocial spirit that an incredible number of Hells Angels members were allegedly involved in a frenzied brawl with civilians in the Vegas of New Zealand. 33 members of the Hells Angels were arrested in June after a public brawl outside a sports bar in Rotorua just before midnight on May 22, 2021. Parts of the fracas were shared on social media. Police described it as an assault on 14 innocent members of the public. Rotorua is a major tourist hotspot on the North Island that brands itself as the Las Vegas of New Zealand. So I guess a biker melee fits in. It took more than a month of investigation and a series of search warrants for police to pull their allegations together, with arrests coming in two waves, 11 of them on June 28th and 12 more on June 30th. All 33 of them, police said, are members of the Hells Angels and range in age from 25 to 57. Their charges include rioting, wounding with intent, and assault with intent. This seems a strange one, if it really was HA members congregating in such numbers and brawling with random civilians in a tourist area. Another big biker club with its roots in America drew some heat in New Zealand this month. A sprawling feud between the Mongols Motorcycle Club and the Headhunters Motorcycle Club. On June 29, 2021, 19 people were arrested in response to a tit-for-tat between the two clubs that included drive-by shootings and arsons at rivals' properties. One of the most alarming incidents was a shooting inside the lobby of the Sofitel Hotel in the central business district of Auckland, New Zealand's largest city. It happened on April 15th. Police immediately pinned the shooting as part of the feud between the Mongols and the Headhunters and linked it to the previous shooting of the Headhunters Clubhouse, which they call gang pads in New Zealand. Their headquarters is based at a gym called Fight Club on a busy commercial stretch that often has motorcycles parked at the door. You know you're there by just looking at the road out front. It's marked by skid marks and circles from motorcycle burnouts. A few days before the hotel shooting, police arrested five members or associates of the Mongols. A two-month police probe tracked both those believed responsible for it and others for helping them avoid police detection. Of the 19 arrested, seven are members or associates of the Mongols who stand accused of numerous charges, including participating in an organized criminal group, arson, gun offenses, and drug dealing. And six of them are members of the Headhunters who face a similar list of charges. A further six associates of the Headhunters were charged with accessory after the fact for allegedly helping the hotel gunman escape. Earlier in May, a 22-year-old headhunter was arrested when police seized ammunition and guns, along with cannabis and cash in a raid. The Headhunters are a homegrown New Zealand outfit, founded back in 1967 as a street gang that evolved into a biker club in the 1980s. Unlike clubs that like to boast of high numbers, the Headhunters remain relatively small, apparently by design, claiming they go for quality over quantity. They incorporated their name with the government in 1996, but the corporation was dissolved this past March. Earlier this month, the headhunters were linked to a seizure of a modest arsenal that stemmed from the international police operation of ANOM, the encrypted communications devices which I told you about recently. I'll link to that video here and below. The guns, along with meth and some pills, were found in a storage locker alongside a set of Headhunters colors, the patches members of motorcycle clubs wear on their back, along with other club clothing, police said. 
the headhunters are friends with the Hells Angels, which may go a long way in explaining their animosity for the Mongols. In February, when police set up checkpoints to monitor a large Hells Angels run, investigators said that members of the headhunters were riding with them. These aren't the first, and certainly won't be the last bikers to be arrested down under. I suppose I mean the last bikies to be arrested. Thanks for watching.